Okay, a week later, we have both the new transmission and engine, and we've got the garage cleared out again, and we're about ready to start doing the chime and chain on this junkyard engine. And we just got done making this adjustable spanner wrench, I guess you could call it. Okay, we got this bolt loosened and on any engine I've ever worked on. So you get the harmonic balancer, crank, pulley, whatever they call it, and these things off. So let's use a puller kit and with bolts that thread into here from these three or four arms here and this main one pushes it off. And then to install it, you have to have a special kit that well, there's an adapter here that threads into this and threads into the crank. Then you have this big nut, you know, thrust, thrust bearing, whatever you want to call it. And that pushes it on square. But we just found out in this one, none of these tools seem to be applicable, even though it says we have to use these in the manual. But I don't know why that requires a puller. Okay, we just got the timing chain cover off. You can see this belt here is the timing chain. And the first thing we notice when we're taking this off is there's quite a bit of wear right here in that location. And that's because you want to get in there and move that. See how loose that is. That's pretty bad. And uh, that's why you should really change these around 100,000 so from what I've been hearing. But this one made it to 96, but sounds like still. Good thing we're changing it now. Not sure yet if we're missing a a bolt here, but it looks very war. It looks like it may have broke off in there. And that is the what? The chain tensioner? Yes. These are not to be used again. The ratchet is done. I have to trade this one in. An old snap on older than I am. I've broken enough half inch breaker bars. I'm gonna go up to the three quarters. Now we can get this time chain guide. Looks like it is out. Look at that. Yep. Well, that was easy. But I bet you it's broke. Okay, so we got this out and we found that there was a bolt. One of these. This is the upper one. Uh, there was one that was broke off in here. I was able to spin it out with a little pick. And you can see where the end. Of the uh, the shoulder here rubbed back and forth before it I assume fell into the oil pan I'll take that off and find try to find it up here where this one originally was we got new ones of these um, if I can angle the camera in the light so you can see down in there you can see it's pretty oblonged kind of ovaled out and I believe that hole is only that size because of the constant wear it got. I believe it was more like the size of this here. So, oh and also on the back of this plug that was here you can see the wear that happened from where it's nice and shiny on this bolt on the head of this from rubbing back and forth. But we're gonna have to tap that out and we're gonna use a, a bigger bolt that has a shoulder similar to the shoulder bolt so it'll retain the top of the timing chain 
guide in place. The closest size that will fill this hole that it's wallowed out was either a 12 millimeter or a, uh, what is this? 17, 17 16. 17 16. So we've actually been drilling this out and we don't have access to shoulder bolts here, you know, in a timely fashion. So this shoulder on this 17 16 bolt is within a couple thousandths of what we need. And it's the right depth or the length on the shoulder. So we're going to use this brute, brute, yeah. We're going to use this bolt and we're going to prune off the extra here. And we've got a tap we're going to run through here, but first, I wanted to film, uh, you know, the difference of the bolts that we're going to be putting in. Now we've got a, a shop vac kind of stuffed up in here in between the uh, casting of the uh, engine block, I guess that is. And I'm going to turn this on and as I drill it's going to suck out as much of the shavings as fall down. But we have also have a whole bunch of paper towel stuffed into everywhere so we don't worry about getting metal shavings down into the the oil pan. Okay, so we're ready to run our tap through here. And we can start this nice with a T handle, but then we're gonna have to finish it with the ratchet. But anyway, uh, what we've done here to kind of help us center it is we've taken a, there's a socket that fits in this hole nice. And that'll help me support this in the middle a lot better than just my hand would. So that's gonna help us start this. And we're just gonna get a little bit of this on camera and then I'm gonna turn the, the vacuum back on so we suck up all these chips. But this is kinda of what it's looking like for right now. Just starting. Being that's aluminum, it's going nice and easy. Feels like I'm pretty centered. Okay. We just milled the three eighths hex head onto a, or out of this set, was a 7 sixteenths bolt? Yep. And we also put a little notch here at the bottom. And what this is gonna do is act as like a bottoming tap, because after we ran our tap through, this isn't the right one, this is the one I grabbed to demonstrate, but see it was kind of rounded here and tapered. That means like, I wouldn't be able to engage all of my available threads, which is kind of important because obviously the original backed out, so. We don't want to, you know, leave any. So, with this here, this is a grade eight, and that's aluminum, so turning this down should clean up those bottom threads. And then, after we've got those cleaned up, we can determine the right depth for this bolt and cut that off. And we had to, we had to mill this um, down a little bit, so with the three eighths head, because, once we get into our little access port here, we don't we wouldn't have enough room to get the full size 7 sixteenths, you know, socket over that. Oh, this is what are we doing now? That's extra work. How I went about fixing this lower mounting location for the timing chain guide is I, I use a various sized end mills in the drill and because it was aluminum I was able to kind of whittle it out enough that I could get a half inch end mill to fit right in there and I just took it down enough so it was flat and then I this is the uh, the replacement bolt that we got right from GM the dealership and I put a washer on the back of there and now when I screw this down that washer sits flush with um, where this 
shoulder bolt would have hit this location in a stock type setup. So we're missing a little bit of threads there, but that's okay. I think that's gonna work out just fine. Okay, with that last bolt that completes our repair work on this, now we can go about changing the time and chain like normal. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna use what little the weekend we have left with all of us here to drop the engine, the old engine in the Cavalier and get ready to put this one in.